Wanna play hide and clap? So the spooky season has been upon us, and I think the most successful horror franchise in the modern era is The Conjuring franchise, The Conjuring universe, that spans eight movies so far, two trilogies, and kinda came from out of nowhere. It's a universe that heavily relies on James Wan, although he only directed the first two Conjurings, because the entire reason this whole thing was successful to begin with is because of James Wan's vision and how amazing of a horror director he truly is. Uh, no spoilers for the upcoming list, let's go ahead and get into that ranking all eight Conjuring movies. I'll try to keep these as brief as possible. At number 8 and last place is The Curse of El Lorena or La Lorena, however you say it. So this movie just makes me want to go watch Shutter Island. The best part of the film is definitely the priest. He's the only memorable character to me. El Lorena is not even that memorable of a character. Just what she does, just her, her origin is what's memorable, not the character. Just... Nothing really happens in this movie, and the priest is the only up to it, in my opinion. Number seven is The Nun. The best thing about this is where it's set. It's set in a creepy castle. That's just a good place to set a horror movie. So The Nun, Valak, is way cooler, way cooler of a character in The Conjuring 2 than she is in her own movie. Now, I'm pretty sure the demon is a female. I'm not 100% sure. I'm just assuming because it's a nun. But anyway, this movie heavily relies on jump scares and just spends entirely too long on like one portion of the movie. Like there's a part where the priest is buried alive and it spends entirely too long on that part of the film. And honestly, that's the most memorable part of the movie for me just because of how long he is buried alive and that's basically just the entire movie it spends way too long on certain things just to drag out runtime uh cheap scares just nothing about the movie is really good but i prefer it over the curse of el lorena because i just like valak as a character more i think the nun is a cooler demon annabelle is entirely in sixth place because it's annabelle it's a doll that freaks me out because porcelain dolls already freak me out now you're gonna put this possessed annabelle doll in front of me and she can the demon for annabelle looks scary as hell i don't really know if it's as cool as the nun but annabelle is scarier than the nun but anyway this movie is just a total cash grab it was probably rushed they were trying to get some of that sweet james wan conjuring cash even though james wan did not direct this movie because if he did it would it would probably be better but the main character being pregnant is just really a cheap way to get scared so she can have a baby later on in the movie and then there's a baby and you got a fear for the baby. That's something that Insidious did way better that because you didn't really have to fear for the baby. The baby, okay, anyway, Insidious is an entirely different movie. James Wan actually did that one, it's better. Let's move on to number five. I'm sorry for the rant. Annabelle comes home. First of all, this movie has Ed and Lorraine Warren, so that's already a step up. You got Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga in this movie already elevating it, even though they aren't in that much of the movie. Now, you pretty much get everything thrown at you in this movie if you thought, like, Annabelle creation was a lot with the supernatural stuff. Annabelle Comes Home just kind of throws everything because it's, it's all focused around the room that Annabelle is kept in, which was teased forever it was teased in the conjuring movies it was obviously teased in all the movies before this in one way or another and that's that's what i like about the movie the rest the acting is okay i guess given what the actors have to work with now something interesting is the character of daniela daniela she was the most irritating and idiotic character i swear it's a horror movie, they they have characters like that in horror movies a lot of the time for some reason. But it really upset me that a, a horror movie this new and this big, The Conjuring Universe is a big thing, has a character like that. But also, this character has an arc, and I actually enjoy the arc, so I hate how stupid her character is. 
I can see what's clouding her judgment, but at the same time, if I was in a situation like that, I would I would not stay in a room with the creepy doll that has disappeared. Also, Annabelle under the bed sheets with Judy sleeping next to Judy is the creepiest thing I've ever seen. So bonus points for that. Now to the halfway point, number four, The Conjuring 3, The Devil Made Me Do It. Now, this is definitely a step down from the first two Conjurings, a pretty significant step down, but it's hard to ask another director to do what James Wan did and keep it on that level of the first two, because that's just... The first two are just some of the best modern horror movies ever made. They're just some of the best overall horror movies in my opinion, especially when it comes to supernatural horror. Now an upside is definitely Patrick Wilson and Bear Farmiga, as I mentioned in Annabelle Comes Home, and they are the main characters in this movie, much like the first two Conjurings, which is always an upside. This was more like a court movie for the first two acts or so, first act and a half, and then it starts to become more like your typical Conjuring movie, but I, I thought a lot of the court stuff was actually very interesting, and I almost wish this movie just was a court movie, because honestly, I think the weakest part of the film is probably the third act. It's still very cool visually, with glass flying everywhere and all of that, but character-wise, I wasn't really connected to anyone outside of Ed and Lorraine. Which has been all these movies on the list so far. Until we get to number three, Annabelle Creation. The Pet Cemetery start to this movie made me feel more emotion than anything else that happened in all the movies ranked below this. Uh, Mr. Mullins, I thought was actually a very cool character. It sucks that he, he you know, bit it. But the parallel to what happened to him and what had happened in the past when they realized that what they had summoned was indeed not their little girl. Of course, their daughter name was Annabelle and she now is the doll. But it's not really Annabelle, it's something else, obviously. Now, I think this movie does the best job of overall connecting to the Conjuring universe. It obviously, it ties into the first Annabelle perfectly. It leaves off where the next Annabelle starts off, which I thought that was handled very well, even though I think the first Annabelle kind of sucks and I, I didn't need this movie to tie into a lesser movie. But I still understand why it was done and the stuff with the sister when she's looking at the picture of the sisters when the nun took place and you see the nun now something i haven't really brought up about all of these movies is the body count is relatively low it's very low for a horror movie it's usually no more than three or four maybe but the top three movies on this list this being the first are the only ones that made me legitimately terrified for the characters i did not know who was going to survive if anyone was going to survive characters still make ridiculously dumb decisions janice deciding to stay in annabelle's room even though obviously some whack crap is going on i forgive this more than say annabelle comes home with daniella because daniella was a teenager nearing adulthood if she's not already 18. Janice is just a child, so it's more forgivable, but it's still, but not completely forgivable. Annabelle Creation, it has some of the best scares in the franchise. It's really just a level or two below the next movie on the list, The Conjuring. Both these Conjuring movies, the first two Conjuring movies, are on pretty equal footing. I prefer the first over the second. Partially because it's the first, also I just think the first Conjuring is paced better and the scares get me a little more because I think if you've seen the first Conjuring, the scares in Conjuring 2, they won't get you as good but they'll still get you because what James Wan does is build tension and he's really more of a do don't show kind of guy because he lets your imagination scare you he doesn't show what you're supposed to be scared of he's letting you scare yourself which is genius and i think the best example of this 
is Hide and Clap. It's just a take on horror that reminds me more of John Carpenter as it's like Halloween, how the first Halloween, it's more about the tension and the buildup than it is the fact that it's a slasher, that Michael Myers is a dude with a butcher knife. These movies don't rely on jump scares, they rely on tension. The Conjuring 2 has two of the best demons in the entire franchise, probably the two best monsters in the franchise in Valak the Nun, who as I mentioned earlier is much better in Conjuring 2 than she is in her own movie, and second of all, the Crooked Man. And Bathsheba, the witch from The Conjuring 1, is just as memorable, in my opinion. Also, the first Conjuring, of course, has the Annabelle scares, which just set up a whole nother franchise in this entire universe, so thank you James Wan. Ed and Lorraine Warren are the best parts of this franchise, and it starts with these movies. They are done so well. James Wan does an excellent job of making you care about the characters. I think the first two Conjurings are where the kids are less annoying. The kids are far less annoying in these movies than they are in all the others, I feel. Characters are not as dumb. This is really just a pick and choose of do you like The Conjuring or The Conjuring 2 more? Which do you prefer? They are on pretty equal footing in my opinion, but I prefer the first Conjuring as I said earlier because I think it's just paced better. The scares hit harder and it's the movie that set this entire universe up, so it's hard not to put it at number one when the movies are that close to me. This movie did all the he heavy lifting and The Conjuring 2 built off of that perfectly. It did what a sequel should do. So, The Conjuring Magnificent movie, The Conjuring 2, was the perfect sequel to it. That caps off my list of all the Conjuring Universe films ranked. Let me know yours down in the comments below. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. Happy Halloween. What would happen to Ed in this one?